I've been hunting for a high quality modern dash camera that doesn't break the bank and today I have another candidate. This is a Red Tiger F7N dual dash camera that offers Wi-Fi, GPS, HDR and 4K resolution all for under $150. Let's see what comes in the box, take some driving footage and see if it's worth it. So mine came with a hardware kit. I will not be using it in this uh, video just because I wanna test it first and if I really, really like it, I will replace my current dash cam in the car with this one. But this will allow you to have parking features and basically have recording 24 seven, which is pretty cool. But looking at the main camera here, we can see that yes, it is 4K, it has a G sensor, so it will notice if there's a, you know, a hit or an accident or anything like that and save that file in a different folder so it doesn't get overwritten. Dual recordings, so you have a rear camera as well, that's gonna be 1080p, like I said, GPS, loop recording, that everybody does that, so you can probably loop between one or three minutes. Uh, looks like you can share it if you connect to the Wi-Fi. So yeah, it has Wi-Fi and of course it has an app. So that's what makes it a smart modern camera. Uh, not that much more on the side, so let's open it up. All right, so here is the camera itself. Let's take off the little protective film right here. All right, looks pretty good. So on the side we have the power button and our micro SD card slot. We have the menu button and then up and down arrows on this side. Reset button at the bottom here and AV in. So this is gonna be for our rear camera and of course the power. So micro USB for power. Um, yeah, that's about it. So let's see what else comes in the box. Okay, so we have the power adapter. Like I said, micro USB, nothing fancy. Looks standard to me. They include a trim removal tool. So that's nice, helps you route the wire to where you need it to go. And we have the rear camera. So this is the option with uh, the waterproof camera. This camera can go outside. So on your license plate or whatever you like. And then you have some extra uh, sticky pads. So like 3M tape probably. And you can you know install it and reinstall it in a different car if you like. They do have options for the regular camera. So the one that goes on the inside. And I think that one's actually like 10 bucks cheaper. But yeah, looks pretty good. And this is the actual amount for mounting the front camera. So this is using the 3M, like I said, adhesive. So that goes on your windshield and then this clips um, into the camera, just like that. And then you're ready to go. So the nice thing is, of course, is that the GPS is built in. You don't have any bulky wires with the GPS and obviously it's pretty adjustable. The negative here is that you cannot adjust it sideways. So if you wanna push it to the right or to the left, you can't really, because it only goes like that. But yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, let me go put this in the car and then we'll go for a drive and see what the footage looks like during the day and at night. All right, as you can see, I have installed the camera in my car and luckily they include one of these peelable uh, plastic sheets that you put on the windshield so it doesn't get stuck on the windshield when you try to remove it, which I love. So yeah, I really do appreciate them including this, but now let's power it on and see what it looks like. Okay, it looks like it takes just a second for it to turn on. Okay, we need to format the SD card, not a problem. I just inserted the SD card that has been used before. So let's do that. Let's see how that's done. So we're gonna go to the menu, go to settings. So this is not a touch screen. I'm gonna go to settings and there is format. So we're gonna format the data, yes. So the SD card is not included with this device. That's something to remember. All right, so here's our main screen. And as you can see, it started recording right away, which is pretty cool. It found the GPS and the mic is enabled. So yeah, very good information here as well. So we have, uh, well, right now it's filming at 2160p and 1080p for the rear. So if we go to the menu, let's see what options we can find in here. Okay, so we have video. That's gonna be the live view, I assume. And then playback, that's gonna be just looking at the videos that we have recorded previously. Obviously, I just put that in, but it's ca categorized, so that's pretty cool. You have your normal stuff for the front and rear and the urgent, so that's the files that get locked. I do like that a lot. It's very easy to kind of see how it works here. And then we're gonna to go to the settings so we can change the resolution. Couple options here. We can do 4K and 1080p or 1440p and 1080p, all right. We have our audio so we can turn on or off the audio so it's not gonna record from the mic. If you turn it off, I do like to keep that on. Date stamp, so that's gonna add it to the video or not. And then loop, so I usually like to keep it at a minute. That seems the most secure. So we'll keep that. G sensor, I usually turn that down to low. Otherwise it records every bump and things like that. So I do like to just keep it on the low settings. 
Uh, we have some fatigue warning and speed and GPS stamp. So I'm going to keep all of those. Yeah, keep sure, make sure that's on. Speed units will keep that at miles per hour. Then we have the app, so we can connect to the app and a few different other uh, settings in here. So we can do a screensaver. Maybe let's do it after like 10 seconds and see what that looks like. I'm also going to turn off the tone so it doesn't beep when I'm using the menu. And of course, we have the parking settings if we hardwired the camera in. They also have the rear cam flip, which I like a lot. A lot of the less expensive cameras don't have that. And it's really annoying that you're, you know, you have to install the camera in a certain way. This way, you can install it whichever way you want. And then, well, it just works. So now if we go back to the main screen, we can see that the camera is now the correct side up. All right, very cool. Now we're just going to get some driving footage. As we can see, the install and the setup of the camera was straightforward and easy to do. And with that out of the way, we can look at the footage this Red Tiger F7N camera can produce. The footage you are seeing was taken on a cloudy day, so keep that in mind. I can say that this does look like true 4K resolution and it has a great 170 degree field of view. You can see everything you would need to see from this front camera. The HDR and WDR work well. There is no overexposure in the brighter areas such as the sky and everything looks crisp. However, I did notice the frame rate is a little lower than I have seen on some of the other higher end cameras. My editing software shows it at 24 frames per second, which isn't bad, but 30 and 60 frames per second give us a more fluid video. The rear camera has performed better than I expected. While it's not as sharp as the front camera, it produces decent footage where you can read license plates and identify other cars once they are in closer proximity. Night footage is always a good indicator of a good quality image sensor, so let's see how well it does. The front camera uses a Sony Starvis sensor and copes with the low light situation well. With limited light, we can still get a good amount of details and the image isn't completely washed out. Overall, I think the front camera has done better than most cameras in this price range and as good as some 300 cameras I've tested before. The only complaint, once again, is the lower frame rate. Okay, we're gonna test the microphone on the camera, see how well it records. I am sitting about two and a half feet away from the camera. We're driving in an electric vehicle, so it's pretty quiet in here. The rear camera can deal with the huge differences of light when the headlights are pointing right at it, but it does well in most other situations. Since it's not behind tinted glass, it helps it a lot with capturing as much light as possible. A higher quality sensor with HDR would probably make a huge difference here, but I haven't had a single camera that has done that yet. What do you think of the day and night footage? Play this video in 4K and let me know what you think down below. I also wanted to quickly talk about the app. Surprisingly, it's very simple and easy to use. I connected my phone to the camera via Wi-Fi, then opened the app and it connected in seconds. Make sure to turn off your cellular internet and then it will show the live preview very quickly. You can, of course, download previously recorded footage, which took about two minutes for two minutes of footage. The front camera file sizes are about four times bigger, so they take four times longer as well. Lastly, you can also change some of the settings from the settings menu. It doesn't seem to have everything I saw on the actual camera, but the basics are there. So is this Red Tiger F7N camera worth its asking price? I definitely think it's priced right and you get a lot for your money. I like the high quality sensor, HDR, and the screen is very easy to see in the direct light as well. On top of that, thank you for including the ability to flip the rear camera and software. I don't know why so many of the cameras don't do this. And with the inclusion of the rear camera and properly developed app, I would say this dash cam delivered more than I expected and I would recommend it to anyone looking for a mid-range, not overpriced, decent quality dual dash camera. If this video was helpful, why not check out this awesome video that just popped up for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.